What's up, guys? This is Cody Brockway. We're back with another episode of Brockway's Vinyl Bites. Woohoo! Yeah! And of course, we got Kermit the Frog just sitting normally this time as opposed to the usual headstands or scratching his butt or whatever else he likes to do, you know? <laughs> anyway, so we are continuing on with the In the 70s series here in the prog rock vein. So the first video um, of the prog rock edition of this, we did 70 to 72, 1970 to 72, 1973 to 74. Now we're doing 75 to 79. So uh, let's get through this. Um, we got lots of great ground to cover here. So let's start off in 1975, Jethro Tull, Minstrel in the Gallery. This is a classic album. Uh, Barrymore Barlow on drums, Martin Barry on guitar. Uh, of course, Ian Anderson doing the flutes and vocals, and um, I forget who plays bass on this, forgive me, but uh, we got Minstrel in the Gallery, which is one of the best prog songs ever, Cold Wind of Valhalla, Black Satin Dancer, Requiem, One White Duck, Nothing at All, and Baker Street Muse. Um, fantastic record, especially the first song when I first heard that, it just went on my brain and just hooked me in. The drumming is out of this world, and I wish I had got the 40th anniversary CD deluxe box set of this, but uh, I was too late, and so hopefully they will uh, they will reissue that in, I guess, a year and a half or two years. <laughs> anyway, oops, sorry. Anyways, we got Minstrel in the Gallery, Jethro Tull. And we've got Queen, Night at the Opera. Yes, it's Prague. It is totally unlike anything you've ever heard before, although many of you have probably heard this album, but, uh, you know, it's got Bohemian Rhapsody, but... Uh, that was so different for the time, the stuff that's on this album. We got Death on Two Legs, Death on Two Legs, dedicated to their manager at the time. Uh, Lazing on a Sunday Afternoon, I'm in Love with My Car, You're My Best Friend. Um, 39, Sweet Lady, Seaside Rendezvous, The Prophet Song, which would go into The Love of My Life, Good Company, Bohemian Rhapsody, and God Save the Queen. So this album was kind of intended to sound like a whole circus of... Of, of things. So you go to a circus and you see a whole bunch of acts happening. That's what this album was intended to sound like. They were really inspired by the Beatles Abbey Road in making this record. And of course they would do A Day at the Races, which is a similar vibe as well. Uh, I didn't pull that CD out though, but uh, A Night at the Opera is likely my favorite Queen album, depending on the day. Great record, and yes, it's prog, and yes, it rocks, so it's prog rock. Uh, okay, so we've got some more from 1975. We have Pink Floyd, Wish You Were Here. Um, this is a great album. So this was their follow-up to Dark Side of the Moon, and they would, they would, they would remain true to the Pink Floyd sound. They, um, it wasn't like they would put out Dark Side of the Moon and make this big pop album. No, no, this has got two two tracks over ten minutes. Um, uh, Shine on Your Crazy Diamonds, Part One to Five, and Shine on Your Crazy Diamond, Parts Six to Nine opening and closing the album respectively. But in between those tracks, we've got Welcome to the Machine, Have a Cigar, Wish You Were Here, the song. And uh, this is a classic album. A lot of people know and love this album. Um, sold millions and millions of albums, but uh, it had to be on this list because uh, it's one of the defining albums of the 70s. You know, it's it's um, everyone and their, and their brother has been influenced by this record in some way, shape, or form. Classic, 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 classic. Every second of music on that album is great, like Dark Side of the Moon and Animals, which is to come, and The Wall, which is also to come. Um, <laughs> sorry to give spoilers, but hey. So we're going to Frank Zappa, uh, One Size Fits All. So this is the only studio album of Frank's that Chester Thompson played drums on. Now, there's no Ralph Humphreys on this like there was on the Roxy and Elsewhere stuff. But uh, we got Ruth uh, Ruth Underwood. Um, I guess Napoleon Murphy Brock might be on this too. But uh, Frank Zappa and Chester Thompson, I mean, Chester Thompson's drumming on this, you know, it's it's some of the best drumming. Like I, I'd venture to say that Inca Rhodes is possibly the greatest compositional piece that I've ever heard. Um but it's especially the drumming in it. It's like, how the hell did these guys even think to write that? <laughs> this is one of my favorite albums of all time. Oh, these are all my favorites, but this is one of my favorite albums for sure. I'm not going to talk about something that sucks. Why would I do that? Anyway, uh, Inca Roads, Can't Afford No Shoes, Sofa Number One, Pojama People, Hey, 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 uh, Florentine Pogan, uh, Evelyn, A Modified Dog, San Bernardino, Andy, Sofa Number Two. You know, it's been so long since I've heard this. I've got to give this another listen because... This is just, it's a masterpiece. It really is. Really, truly is. Don't take my word for it. If you haven't heard Frank Zappa's One Size Fits All, uh, go check it out. And this was, the, this was the last album that he would do under the Mothers of Invention moniker. It would just go down to Frank Zappa from there on out. Here we get Terry Bozio on drums and so on and so forth. Chad Wackerman, Vinnie Colaiuta, lots of guys. Um, 
David Bowie, Station to Station. This is one of his most progressive sounding albums. We got Station to Station, the song, which opens up the album. It's a 10 minute track, goes through the peaks and valleys, starts off really slow and atmospheric, and then picks up. Must be the side effects of the cocaine. Da da da. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the song lyrics. I'm not saying that. <laughs> but uh, Station to Station, Golden Years, which is actually a big hit for him. I just heard it on Classic Final on Sirius XM this afternoon. Word on a Wing, TVC 15, Stay and Wild is the Wind. This is classic. And this is, uh, this is in this little slip form because it's actually from the Who Can I Be Now box set. But uh, Station to Station, love that album. Ah, yes, the band that is on my shirt. So we're going to 1976. And I'm sorry, I should say that the Bowie album's from 76 as well. Uh, Rush, All the World's a Stage. Uh, yeah, I really got, uh, what can I say? You know, Canadian band, uh, drummers from about an hour away from me. And uh, well, the whole band has actually grew up within an hour from, from where I live in Caledonia, Ontario. But uh, Rush or Origins originates out of Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and uh, this is one of the greatest live albums of all time. There's no overdubs or none of that. It's just straight up live right off the stage. Massey Hall in Toronto. I've been there a few times. Seen Steve Hackett there, ironically. Um, but uh, we got Bastille Day, Anthem, Fly By Night, and In The Mood, uh, Something For Nothing, Lakeside Park, 2112. They do the whole 2112. Actually, I think they I think they took out uh, one or two parts of 2112, but... Uh, so it's a 20-minute track, but they've played, they play 15 minutes of it here. Um, Bytor and the Snow Dog, In the End, Working Man, Finding My Way, and What You're Doing. Yeah, this is, uh, this is one of my favorite live albums for sure. I got really into this a couple years ago when a Rush tribute band had approached me um, to a actually, actually learn this whole thing pretty much, and so I did. Um, so this was from the 2112 tour. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. so they'd put out the album and then they would go out on tour and, and make this crazy album, one of the best albums and I know how to play the whole damn thing now thanks to that band I never ended up joining the band for um, for personal reasons, it was not because I couldn't play the parts because I learned everything right off the album pretty much, but uh, anyway 2112, the studio album this album, when I was a teenager I first got introduced to this, a friend of mine in high school was a big Rush fan, I was a super big Led Zeppelin fan at the time, still am, still am of course but I was kind of saying, Led Zeppelin's the greatest band and he's like, dude, you got to hear Rush. And I'm like, I've, I'd heard a couple of Rush songs up to that point, but I heard moving pictures in 20 and, 2112 and just went, <laughs> the head just exploded into a million pieces. And I'm like, okay, I get it. I get it. <laughs> then Rush was my favorite band. Then I would discover more of Genesis. And oh, I just love them all, you know, but 2112, that takes up all of side one. Uh, Passage to Bangkok, The Twilight Zone, Lessons, Tears, Something for Nothing. This is a, this is a classic album. Um, one of the best albums to ever come out of Canada. 2112 by Rush. And then an album that I recently got into from a friend of mine who had recommended me listen to this. But uh, this is uh, Mood and Madness by Camel. This is uh, Andy Latimer, Latimer or Latimer. I'm not sure how you pronounce his name. I apologize, but he plays on guitar. And I guess uh, Andy Ward on the drums. This is another. There's, there's, um, this is from the UK, this band, Camel. And they're from the Canterbury prog rock scene. But uh, this is a really good album. I just recently got into this, Moon Madness by Camel, and it's really, really good. So I got this uh, deluxe bonus uh, bonus disc edition of it. I haven't played the bonus disc yet, but uh, the tracks are Aristillus. This is on the studio album. Uh, Aristillus, Song Within a Song, Chord Change, which is a really good one. Spirit of the Water, Another Night, which is also really good. Airborne and Lunar Sea. The whole album was really enjoyable. So... Yeah, check it out. <laughs> Great playing, really. It's, it's sort of jazzy. I've heard that uh, Michael uh, Michael Ackerfeld from, Op from Opeth actually says that this is his favorite Camel album too, so that's also a nice little plug there. If you've never heard it, you want to go check it out. Really interesting record. Genesis, Trick of the Tale. So this is the first album after Peter Gabriel would leave the band. This is in 1976. They, they, didn't, they, they had auditioned about 400 other singers, and then Phil Collins sang one of the tracks. And uh, all of a sudden, it just made sense for them that he would become their singer. So he did. So on the studio records, he would play the drums and sing. But live, they would get Chester Thompson to play the drums from the Frank Zappa Mothers of Invention band. But a Trick of the Tale, my God, what a fantastic album. Dance in a Volcano, Entangled, Squonk, Madman Moon, Robbery Assault and Battery, Ripples, A Trick of the Tale, Los Endos. I could go on for hours and hours about this. Uh, I won't, but uh, I could. This is a classic album and indeed a great, great Genesis record. 
You might say that this next band is not a prog rock band at all, but uh, they have a lot of prog rock elements to them, and uh, this album is is one of their one of their most prog esque albums. Got the Grateful Dead, Terrapin Station. The song Terrapin Station, I think, is a masterpiece. It's a prog rock masterpiece. Uh, but then, if you know, of course, we got Estimated Profit, which uh, alternates time signatures. Um, between 7, 8, and uh, actually I think it's all in 7, 8. Uh, we got Passenger, Dancing in the Streets, Samson and Delilah, and Sunrise. But my favorite, uh, as much as I love those songs, my favorite is Terrapin Station. Comes in at about 16, 17 minutes or so and goes through lots of peaks and valleys, movements and things like that. It has a drum solo bit between Bill um, Bill Kretzman and Mickey Hart in the middle. They have this really cool, uh, inter- um, <laughs> this really cool uh, middle part where they're, where they're playing these sort of African-esque beats in 7-8, uh, alternating between 7-8 and 6-8 timing. I know this is drummer talk, but uh, it's just a great song, great piece of music. And uh, it kind of kills me that they never do that whole piece live, just the first 10 minutes of it, because you know the whole thing is worthy of being played live, but it might be a bit too difficult. It's a difficult song. So, Terrapin Station, Grateful Dead, 1976. And we're going to move on to 1977 with Rush, the album that's actually on my T-shirt. We've got A Farewell to Kings, this was one of my favorite Rush albums. We got A Farewell to Kings, Xanadu, Closer to the Heart, Cinderella Man, Madrigal, and Cygnus X1. Any Rush fan will tell you that this is one of the best pieces of music, one of the best music things ever released. <laughs> anyway, yes, going for the one. This is also on the gold disc. This is the um, this is the Tales from Topographic Oceans lineup of the band back together. So we got Rick Wakeman, Alan White, Chris Squire, John Anderson, and Steve Howe back for the first time in a few years 1977 um we got the songs on here are going for the one turn of the century parallels wondrous stories and awaken awaken is the long track it's 15 minutes um but the other songs are much much shorter in comparison um classic album uh, this is uh this is one of my favorite yes albums uh steven wilson didn't remix this one and uh it would be really cool to hear if he did not that there's anything wrong with the mix of it but uh um, he, he cut off the, the remix campaign just before this album, and I wonder why, because it's a very, very, very interesting album. One of my favorite Yes, you know, it's five of my favorite Yes songs on here. Very great. Some people don't like the album cover, but hey, you're not listening to the cover, are you? <laughs> so 1977 continues with Pink Floyd's Animals. This is arguably the most progressive rock-esque album. Uh, all the songs are over 10 minutes, minus Pigs on the Wing Part 1 and 2. But we got Dogs, which is 17 minutes, Pigs, three different ones, which is just over 10 minutes, and the same for Sheep. This is one of my absolute favorite Pink Floyd albums. This is where Roger Waters really starts to take the political reins over the lyrics, but the music on this is so intricate, complex, and interesting. Um, how could this not be one of my favorites? And uh, the guitar playing from David Gilmour on this, totally fantastic. I've actually seen Roger Waters play all three of the big songs of this live. <laughs> Uh, continuing on with 1977, this would be the album that uh, Steve Hackett would finish with this band, and then he would leave after the tour. Um, Genesis, yeah, Wind and Weathering. Uh, so after this, he would do the tour, which would become the Seconds Out. I didn't pull the Seconds Out CD, but uh, you know you can't pull out every single thing, right? <laughs> uh, great album, anyway. But uh, that's the live album. So this is the album, Wind and Weathering that they would go and play most of this, or at least a good portion of this on the Seconds Out album. But after this album, he basically said, I'm done in Genesis, because I guess he felt that, that most of his material that he wanted on the album wasn't was kind of getting vetoed. So he would continue on with his solo records and make uh, about 30 more <laughs> great solo albums after this. But uh, Wind and Weathering, I think this is an amazing album, and I think most Genesis fans would agree with me. We've got 11th Earl of Mar, One for the Vine, Your Own Special Way, Watt Gorilla, All in a Mouse's Night, Blood on the Rooftops, Unquiet Slumbers for the Sleepers, In That Quiet Earth and Afterglow. So over the seven times that I've seen Steve Hackett play live, I've seen him play most of this record. They would shorten down to a three-piece after this, just do the Banks, Collins, Rutherford thing. And, uh, you know, the rest is sort of history, but uh, great album, Wind and Weathering, love it. Robert Fripp's Exposure. We actually have Peter Gabriel and Phil Collins playing on this. Uh, this is the remix from Stephen Wilson. Um, this is such a wacky record. It's so out there that uh, I would just recommend that you go listen to it yourself. It is really worthy of your time. Maybe you'll love it. Maybe you won't. I don't know. But Robert Fripp's Exposure from 1978 is worthy of being on my list. Next up, we got 
Frank Zappa's Joe's Garage, Act 1 through 3. We've got Philly, sorry, Philly, Vinnie Kaliuta playing drums on this, and uh, this is highly regarded as one of Zappa's best albums. This is basically a story of a guy named Joe who is a musician, and uh, but uh, the government is trying to ban the freedom of art. So Joe basically goes crazy, and he starts having sex with a vacuum cleaner and ends up in a mental hospital at the end of the album. It's a concept, sort of, and it's really funny. And I'd recommend pulling out your vinyl copy of this and reading along with the story and the lyrics inside the sheets, because uh, this is an epic album. And, uh, you know, Catholic Girls, Crew Slut, um, Watermelon and Easter Hay, some of Frank's best music is on this album. Totally great. 1979. What great album came out in 1979? Ask yourself that, folks. Well, okay, now I got the answer for you. It's Pink Floyd, Pink Floyd, The Wall. All these 1979 choices are great, but I digress. We got Pink Floyd, The Wall. This is one of their most acclaimed albums up there with Dark Side of the Moon, Wish You Were Here, and Animals. Um, um, this is a concept album of a guy named Pink, who is a troubled rock star. Um, most of you probably know the whole story of this album, and maybe you've seen the movie too. Worth it. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Um, some days, this is my favorite Pink Floyd album. This is just one of their best. Uh, Roger Waters had really sort of taken over full creative control here, unfortunately for the other members, but, uh, you know, good art is good art, and uh, I love this album, Pink Floyd, The Wall. Even the artwork is fantastic. Look at that. Totally great. Wrapping this up. If you made it this far, I certainly hope you did. We're going to take it to... A different direction with a guy named Eddie Jobson. So this is a compilation of his studio works from 1971 to 1979. Now, he was in multiple bands, including Frank Zappa. He was in Frank Zappa's band. And uh, he was in a band with Bill Bruford and John Wetton and Alan Holdsworth called UK. And so this is uh, basically his studio works from 71 to 79. It's kind of a compilation of everything he had done throughout that time, but you end up getting the two, um, the two UK albums uh, highlighted on here. Uh, which is the self-titled UK and Danger Money. And I think there's stuff from the... Actually, I think there's stuff from the live album on here, too. And there's a live track with Frank Zappa as well. Anyway, he's awesome. Eddie Jobson, great keyboardist. Love it. Well, thanks for watching my prog rock uh, trilogy here in the 70s. And we'll see you next time for more rock and roll. If you like this video, like and subscribe. Uh, if you liked my list, uh, feel free to, uh, you know, Feel free to like, and if you have more things that you wanted to add, just feel free to tell me in the comments. I would love to discuss with you. I'd love to hear from you, your thoughts. Share this with your friends and family uh, and anyone that you think would want to see it. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time on Brockway's Vinyl Bites. Rock on!